So we get a phone call that night. This is the daycare center. And she hasn't come to pick up Tiara. Uh oh, what do you mean? That's not good. You know, she would never, never in a million years not pick up Tiara. So my mother called me. She sounded worried and she was like a little frantic. And um, she said, can you go over to Misty's house and see if she's okay? As soon as I hung up, I called my brother, Jason, and I told him what happened. So me and my brother went out, we went looking for Misty. On the ride there, it was either she was kidnapped, she was held somewhere, or she was killed. That was, those were the two options, because this never happened before with her. When we pulled up, we saw my sister's car in the parking lot. So we were like, that's crazy, is she home? So I say, this isn't good. Like her car's there, this isn't good. We were calling her phone, Noelle's phone, nobody was answering. My brother touched the doorknob and the, and the door opened, so it wasn't locked, and we walked in. And we walk in and, and Misty's, she's, she's lying on the ground in her hallway. You know, she's got, her arms are wide open and, um, She's got strangulation marks all around her neck and stuff like that, a little blood underneath her nose. And her shirt was half off, you know, her pocketbook and all the belongings were all strewn all over the floor like she was dragged. So she was fighting, I can tell, like it was a struggle. Throughout all of that, I had to call my mother and let her know the bad news. And that was like the worst thing I ever had to do in my life. You know, I remember his words, he said, it's not good. And I said, well, you know, what do you mean? It's, it's not good. And, you know, I just kept saying, what do you mean? And he said, she's gone. <laughs> you know, so. We pretty much figured out it was her ex-boyfriend, Noel. That was the main suspect. And when my brother tried to call him, he didn't answer. We knew, we knew it was him. We found out that this wasn't the first time he had a domestic violence issue. We told you last spring about Fatima Di Pierola, who was scarred for life by her ex-boyfriend. He slashed her throat. Noel Irizarry began harassing and threatening Fatima after they broke up but her request for a restraining order was denied. Irizarry was later arrested for beating her with an aluminum baseball bat. Today, he pleaded guilty to attempted murder charges and was sentenced to 20 years behind bars. I'm gonna get into Trenton State Prison. I wanna talk to Noel, and uh, I wanna confront him on a bunch of things, and it's right up the street from my house, so. But this is where he's at, this is where he's living, probably, hopefully, for the rest of his life. I've changed a lot, but, um. I was a, a very abusive years ago. Any relationship I was in, I was domineering, you know, I was dominant. If I didn't get in my way, I'd get angry. It would escalate. The abuse with him was mental, it was, you know, somewhat physical. Even the marriage I'm in now, it was like that for a long time. I just kind of, I dealt with what I had to deal with. You know, I've. There was so much abuse that I've already been through before that you kind of learn to just survive what you get thrown at. And that's what I did. She was a victim. So that's what she knew how to be. So when we met, I was an angry abuser. She was a, a, an angry victim. And we came together like a plug in a socket. And we just carried out those ways for a long time. And if we're gonna break the cycles of, of violence, we really need to work closer with the kids that they often are an unreported victim. If somebody did to my daughter what I was doing to Tamara, that's devastating. That's like, I can't even, you know, explain the feelings that, would, that, that I would have if, if somebody was mistreating my, my little girl, my baby, my, my daughter. The thing that drives me to do this is, um, my sister could have been saved if there was a if there was a registry. 
You know, if there was a registry and he and he was and Noel was on it, she would have saw what he did. We would have all known what he did, and we all would have made sure that that relationship was over. You know, it's interesting when you think about how counties in the U.S. have been able to successfully pass animal abuse registries. But when it comes to the concept of a domestic violence registry available to the public, there's been pushback on this for, you know, about 10 years. When you bring up a domestic violence registry, you think about it and then say, yeah, why not? We, we have one for Megan's Law, which is serving the public uh, well. Um, but I think that the public should be on notice for potential abusers. If I could boil it down to one thing, I, I just, I really don't want my sister to be forgotten. I don't want my sister's death to just be another death, you know, and they, they wrote a story about it and she's gone forever. So not if, but when this law gets passed, it will save lives. It will, it will protect some people. And I, I, I feel proud about that. <laughs>